Welcome to Spooky Sunday. Harris and I worked really hard on this. Like, it's been hectic. I so we, we pretty much made everything except for the donuts. We got those from Dunkin' Donuts. So this is a Halloween themed mukbang. So here we have mummy hot dogs. <laughs> These are spooky donuts. These are like creepy eyeball pasta. I like food colored it and like worms or whatever you think that could be. Poison apples. Guys, these took <laughs> fuck. I don't even talk about it. Yeah. Um, Blood, sweat, <laughs> and tears. tears. Literally. Made this spider pizza. Isn't that awesome? Jello candy corn um, jello things with like whipped cream on the, on the top. So we made all of this for you guys. Just kidding, it's for us. <laughs> Savage. But, yeah, I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, today, while we eat and enjoy this d spooky meal, we're gonna, well, Harrison's gonna be telling me, and obviously you guys, some... Five of the creepiest yeah. real-life stories I've found. Yeah, and I'm gonna react to them, so I'm gonna be like, what the heck? Yeah, these, are, these are extremely creepy. Uh, the first two are videos, and the last three are incidents. So I'm gonna pull them up and show them to Soph. So let's uh, let's have some. Uh, yeah, let's just first start and then we can. You want to? Uh, guys, Winston, no. No, Winston. Guys, I've been dreaming about this since I was like always like a spooky themed um, mukbang. No, actually not mukbang. Just anything. Basically, when I'm a mom, I decided that every Halloween I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna make it like crazy and really spooky. But what? There's a spider on my pizza. Your homemade what the pizza heck? is so good. Mmm. Mm. Better than yesterday. <laughs> Better than yesterday. <laughs> we tried to do this yesterday, but it failed miserably, so. Miserably. Alright. Mmm. Time to pull up the spooky stories. I'm excited. This is a fallen angel they found on tape. Alright. Two guys in the woods. Okay. This is a video on YouTube from 2006. Is that a wing? It was in Mexico, I think. See that? Look. See the back? I like the wings. Oh! I've seen that before. That's creepy. What the hell was that? Oh no. Look at Is there like a story about it? It was just posted to YouTube, they have no idea. What's well, edited? 2006, you think they had video editing that good back then? Yeah. What do you think that was? Oh no, that's really creepy. Like really creepy. <laughs> the eyes like shined really bright. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try one of these. I'm gonna pull the next story. Here, I'm gonna mix this together so it's like tasty. So basically, it was just food coloring, so it's not like actually worms. So that's pretty cool. Mmm. What? This is so good. Really? Mm-hmm. Mmm. Now people have been recording these things all over. And they're these witch-like things that they see in the sky. And some people think they're aliens. And there's actually a case, I think it was in Mexico, with a police officer. And he had one of these witch-like alien things go up to his car and slam its face into the windshield multiple times. What? It was in Mexico. 
Why they don't have footage of that, but this is a police officer. This is someone who could lose his job from saying this, mm -hmm. like this crazy, nutty stuff. But they're these like hooded aliens, and there's drawings people have done of them. Um, what does it look like? I'll show you footage of them. I'm gonna have this. And they fly in the sky. There's here. There's multiple footages of these things. So look at this. What the hell is that? It's just flying. It literally looks like a witch. It literally looks like a witch. Look, there it is. Moving in the sky. Why are all the videos from 2006? Yeah, and in Mexico. And in Mexico, yeah. This Wait, is, the, what, is there like a story of what it could be? They think that they're aliens. They're a species of alien who's on our planet. What if they're actually witches? That would be even crazier. That would be even crazier to be honest. But look, it's still going. But there's footage all over of these things, like, here I'll show you more, like Flying Witch. Look at this. Here's another one. There's another one, look. Goblin. Yeah, what if it's the green goblin? Back to formula! <laughs> Literally. That's spook. So wait, the the west. Literally. That's so spook. Do you know what else is spook? This. I don't know, you tell me what the fuck that is. Yeah, that looks real. That doesn't look like it's edited. I'm gonna try one of these here donuts. These spook donuts. Mm. Is that the cream filled one? Mm mm. Mm, it's your standard donut. Oh, there's a whole. Mm hmm. This pasta is actually pretty good. You should try it. I will, but let me uh, eat my donut first. Ooh, yeah! Mm. Worms! Worms are so tasty! Okay. I hope I don't drop this, but this is good. Mm. By the way guys, I'm gonna link all the recipes in the description. So if you guys wanna do this, you can. Here's the painting. Who's it by? The hands resist him by Bill Stone, Stoneham. 1972? Yep, 1972. Okay, so now I found an article about this. In the year 2000, this painting appeared on eBay with a tag claiming it was haunted. The seller stated the figures moved at night. The auction That's included- not okay. Yeah, the auction included <laughs> a waiver, absolving them from all liability after the painting was sold and any dangers that may follow. So the history behind the painting so, in February 2000, the painting appeared on an auction on eBay. It was titled, The Hands Resist Him and quickly earned a reputation as tens of thousands of people viewed the item, with more than a few made bids. And the reason for the attention was the seller made the claim that the painting was haunted. The family added their story, starting from their discovery of the painting, abandoned at an old brewery, to the events and the investigation they carried out in order to prove their claims. Okay. So this is the description of the item. Warning, do not bid on this painting if you are susceptible to stress related disease or you faint of heart or unfamiliar with supernatural events. By bidding on this painting, you agree to release the owners of all liability in relation to the sale or any events happening after the sale. This might be contributed to this painting. This painting may or may not possess supernatural powers that could impact 
your life. So he displayed the art in Los Angeles at a show in the early 70s. The painting was sold to the actor John Marley, who played Jack Woltz in The Godfather. Okay. That's the character who wakes up with the severed head in his yeah. bed? Yeah. So he had it. So it was, before that painting was sold, it was reviewed by an art critic who died within the year. And the owner of the art gallery died. So this is probably a coincidence, but some people speculate that's the beginning of the curse. Hmm. So John Marley died. There's in, more? Yeah. John Marley died in 1984 after open heart surgery. So he was interned at Cedar Park Cemetery in Emerson, New Jersey. And then the painting went into somebody else's possession. Now from that point on, the journey of the painting is a mystery until it turned up when a family found it abandoned behind an old brewery. Without thinking twice, the family took the painting home, but they soon wished they hadn't. Uh. The painting had only been in the house for a few days when the young daughter started to complain about it. She told how the children in the painting would fight. The girl, aka the doll, would threaten the boy with an object she was holding in her hand. So finally, after a good period of time, the girls started talking about how the figures would leave the painting as ghosts and continue their fighting. I have chills all over. Yeah. Do you? So the parents decided to try and persuade the daughter that the painting was just a painting. And in order to do that, they set up a motion-activated camera to watch the painting for them. Three days and nights, they let the camera keep the lens on the painting. And after that period of time, they went to view any of the footage that may have captured. Now remember, this is a motion activated camera, so if it found no movement, there'd be nothing recorded. Okay. <clears throat> to the shock of the family, the camera did record footage. The camera capture was the painting almost taking on a life of its own. All the figures did not seem to be moving, the colors changed, and the objects- Is there something online about that? I couldn't find anything. The object in the girl's hand took on the resemblance of a gun and another weapon, with a battery she had had been changed. The object in her hand may have seemed to have changed due to the different lighting conditions being present in the dark, mm -hmm. but the family insists that there was something to remiss with the painting, and they wanted to get rid of it, but rather than burning it and destroying it, they decided to let the public decide. So they put it up for auction on eBay, and let the buyer do... What's that? That's the hands in it. Really? Yeah. They let the buyer do with it what they wanted. So the opening bid started at one ninety nine, and eventually sold to the Perception Gallery, and Grand Rapids for $1,025. Okay. That's not very hard for a painting. Yeah, right? A painting. So, after the auction on eBay, it was sold to the Perception Gallery, and the painting apparently still affects those who view it. People feel ill after viewing it, and a few people have fainted. So, viewer, if you feel ill, you better stop watching this video right now. Children seem to be the most affected, having vivid nightmares at the night after seeing it and waking up screaming. That creepy. That's so scary. The girl looks freaking terrifying. She's a doll. Look. Yeah. Wait, what's she holding? I don't know, like a box of wires. That's so scary. Which is really creepy about this is when I was a little kid and I saw this, I saw a gun in her hand. Not this thing. I saw that too. But now it's changed to this. I see a gun. That's why I said what is I see like a bottle now. Yeah, but with a gun too. I saw a gun when I was a little. When you, really? Mm-hmm. I mean, you couldn't see a bottle at all? I remember reading about this in a book on creepy stories when I was a little boy. And this picture was a gun, of a gun, rolling with a gun when I was a child. But now as an adult, I see it and it's this. Damn. What do you guys bottle. see? Do you guys see a gun or a bottle? There's something about this photo, it's just disturbing. Like, That's it's like, so scary. It's like not a good, like the children just look horrible. Like his head is like huge, she's really scary. There's hands in the back. White. She looks, I don't know, it's, it's like disturbing. That's really creepy. That is disturbing. So it's just a like really bad stuff happened around it. People died. Why would anyone buy that? Like. I love horror and stuff, but I would never just buy a haunted painting like that. That sounds like a mistake. That sounds like something you shouldn't do. There's ketchup and mustard. This is good by itself. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. I'm gonna try one of your world famous candy apples. Oh, okay. Mm. Here, have it. Oh, do you want the better one? I'm scared I'm gonna break my teeth. It like left a little thing on the table, but we'll keep doing that with hot water. You did good. Yeah, I hope so. Mm. What's your favorite Halloween memory? Probably going trick or treating when I was a little boy. Yeah. And getting the huge candy bars and being like, yeah! <laughs> How about you? Well, in Sacrus, we didn't celebrate Halloween. But the first time I ever came here and we went to Texas, and we went to this Halloween thing and we trick or treated, it was so fun. So now I'm gonna tell you the story of the Suicide Dog Bridge. It sounds sad. <laughs> it is sad. Can I have the candy apples, the one on the, that one? Thank you. Look at it, it's so cool. All right, in 1994, a 32 year old man threw his infant son, Eugen, to his death on a clear day between the two last pair of pets at the bridge, claiming his child was the Antichrist. That's mean. The man tried to kill himself twice after this, first by following his son off the, off the bridge, which he was stopped from doing so from by his wife, then by slashing his wrists with a knife he found. The child died in the hospital the following day. The man was found not guilty of murder by reason of insanity by unanimous verdict and committed to Caristeria Psychiatric Hospital in South Lancashire. Now yet, whatever is going on in Milton, it's not humans who are at risk so much as dogs, which has brought the area notoriety and weird news circles around the globe. Since the 1950s, 50 different dogs have died after leaping off the 50 foot tall bridge. They just go, they just jump off? They just jump off. Imagine you're just walking your dog and you're like, your dog just jumps off that bridge. You're like, what the heck? That's terrifying. Some 600 dogs have made the same jump and survived. 600 dogs? Sometimes after the dogs have made the jump, survive, and they come back up again and they jump off as soon as they can and kill themselves. What? Is this real? It's a real bridge. So what on earth is causing these dogs to jump off the bridge? A curse? Some scientific explanation? Scientists have conducted a bunch of tests and still have not found a single solid explanation for dog suicide. What do you think? What do you think of that, though? That's terrifying. I don't believe it. Is that real? Is there real. like evidence of that? Mm-hmm. Does it still go on? Mm -hmm. Where is this place? Scotland. That is really, really scary. Dogs just commit suicide there. I wonder if Loon commits suicide there. Loon's not a dog. I don't know, I find that really creepy. And I don't like that. I don't like it at all. I feel like, I don't know, why would anyone want to make that up anyway? It's too bizarre. But dog walkers around the area avoid it. Really? Mm-hmm. Is it just dogs? Just dogs. No other animal? No, they just, but what does that have to do with the dad killing the son? Just weird stuff happens at that bridge. So it's not just dogs. It's like maybe it's like a bridge to another dimension, or a bridge to like a like a weird energy, you know? Well, dogs know that if they jump, they'll get hurt. Yeah, dogs don't do that. Cats do that kind of stuff. Not even. My cat is jumping, is afraid from jumping down from like the bookcase. No, I mean like cats like don't really have that much fear or stuff like that. I don't know. I think cats have more fear than humans. I don't know, because like you always find dead cats on the street, you know? Like they like cross the street and you're like, no, no one would do that. Like, why do you do that, cats? You know? 600 dogs, Sophie. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy! Toby really wants me to try this pasta. Because he's scared.
scared of it. It spooks him. It does spook me. Wow. Is it? That's it. <laughs> Regular pasta. I'm dying! <laughs> it's alright. What do you mean it's alright? It's pasta. No. Eat it. <laughs> Eat it, you spooky monkey. Now, we're about to get to the spookiest story in my opinion. Oh, isn't he cute? Oh! He's a spook master. He's like, I'm gonna come up with spooky stories. <laughs> spooky. Yeah. Okay, now this is the spookiest story. Now this has always freaked me out. Um, this story is something that just is the most bizarre story you've ever heard of. And now I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right, but it's called the Dilatov Pass inc Incident. It's Russian. Let me see. Dilatov Pass Incident. Dilatov. Dilatov. Diet love pass into the Diet love. Do you want some peeps? I'm eating my donut. Look at how spooky it is. Okay. Guys, I'm getting really full. I'm sorry. I don't know why. I'm gonna lose her. Unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> this is not me usually. I think it's just I've been working so hard to make this food that I'm just not even that hungry. It's like really hot in here too. Don't tell them that. Oh yeah, that's true. It's okay. really cold in here. It's spooky. <laughs> <laughs> On January 31st, 1959, a 23-year-old skier, Igor Islas Delatov, and his team of eight experienced ski hikers from the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked on a journey to reach the peak of Orton. None of the hikers were ever seen alive again. Now, from what was covered from the cameras and diaries recovered from the site of their deaths, investigators were able to piece together that on February 1st, the hiking team began to make their way through the then unnamed pass leading to Orton. As they passed through the hostile cold climate toward the base of the mountain, they were hit with snowstorms that ripped through the narrow mountain pass. Decreasing visibility caused the team to lose their sense of direction, and rather than moving towards Orton, they accidentally deviated their course west and found themselves on a slope near the top of a nearby mountain. And this mountain is known as Kolat Sikil, meaning the dead mountain in the language of the ind indigenous Manzi people of the region. In order not to lose the altitude they had gained, or because the team wanted to practice camping on a mountain slope for their ascent of Orton, Dietlov called for the camp to be made there. So now it was on a solitary mountainside that all nine hikers would meet their end. It was going up really good. Before he embarked on the journey, Dietlov had told his sports club that he and his team would send them a telegram as soon as they returned from the hike. When January 6th rolled around, there was no communication from the ski hikers. A search party was mounted. After a volunteer force found the campsite, army and police investigators were sent in to determine what had happened to the students. When they arrived in the mountain, the investigators intended to find a simple scene. Though these were students, they were very experienced hikers and the route they were taking was extremely difficult, and accidents on these mountain trails were unheard of. However, what the investigators found would only raise more questions as to the nature of events that killed these nine students, and that would open a mystery which still continues today. When they first arrived at the camp, the first thing the investigators noticed was that the tent was cut open from the inside, and all the team's belongings and most of their shoes were left in there. Then, they discovered eight or nine sets of footprints from the team, many of them clearly made by people with either nothing, socks, or a single shoe on their foot. These tracks were led to the edge of a nearby woods, almost a mile away from the camp. At the forest edge, under a large cedar, the investigators discovered remains of a small fire that the hikers appeared to have built. Around the fire were the first of the two bodies that they found, that of Yuri Kravashenko, 23 years old, and Yuri Doryshenko, 21. Despite the temperatures of negative 13 to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit at the night of their deaths, both men were wearing bodies. Both men's bodies were found shoeless and wearing only their underwear. They then found the next three bodies, those of Dilatov, 
Zidniada Kolmogrova and Rustam Slobindan, who died on their way back to the camp from the cider tree. While these deaths were odd, they were far from inexplicable. All the students had clearly died, possibly hypothermia, and they had no indication of severe external damage. It was not until four other bodies were found two months later that the mystery deepened. They were found in a ravine 75 meters deeper into the woods than the cedar people, and there were significantly different causes of death. Three of the hikers had fatal injuries, including Nicola Thibux Bernoulli, who had significant skull damage, and Ludma Divinina and Simon Solotero. They had major chest fractures that could only have come from an immense force, comparable to that of a car crash. In the most gruesome part of the past incident, Dubinia was missing her tongue, eyes, and parts of her lips, as well as facial tissue and a fragment of her skull bone. They also found the body of Alexander Kolitov, 24, in the same location but without severe wounds. The bodies also had radiation on them, and that led to theories that students had been killed by some secret radioactive weapon. But the radiation oh, was largely discounted as a cause of death because a radioactive weapon would have ele elevated radiation to a much higher level. But it's possible the ski hiking team was unfortunate enough to encounter testing of some USSR concussive weapon. This explanation would match the testimony of another hiking group. We're camped up 50 kilometers from the Dietlef encampment. The group spoke of strange orbs floating in the sky moving towards Colette Sealy. This testimony was also corroborated by reports from the Weather Service and Army. Lev Ivanov, chief investigator of the Dyatlov Pass incident said, I suspected at the time, and I'm sure now, that these bright flying spheres, spheres we saw in the sky at that night had a direct connection to the group's death when he was interviewed by a Kazakh newspaper in 1990. Censorship and secrecy in the USSR forced him to abandon this path in the end, the deaths of these students were officially attributed to a compelling natural force, and the Dyatlov Pass case was closed. What the oh, hell okay. happened to those nine hikers? I don't know. They had their, she had her tongue missing and her eyes, and they were radiated, and they all ran. Aliens. They literally ran, they cut their tent open from the inside, and they ran out into the wilderness, their warm tent, it split up into different groups, they died over there, over there they got their, one of them got their tongue removed. They were like, irradiated when they got like, their chest split do you, open. Do you think it was like a government thing? They were in the middle of nowhere. Like hundreds of miles of nothing. Uh, whoa. When did this happen again? 1950 I think, let me see. That's so scary. Maybe it was like aliens or something. Let's see. What do you think it was? 1959. What do you think it was? Some people think it was like a Russian Yeti. A Yeti? Mm-hmm. What, how do you explain They have radiation? footage of Bigfoot, I don't know, maybe, maybe the Yeti is radioactive. Do you believe in that stuff? I believe that there's things we don't know. I'm not gonna go far as to say that there's fucking Yetis out there. <laughs> um, well, what? I don't know. Maybe it was vampires. That is the most sure. weird case I've ever heard of. Like, what the hell happened to them? Have you heard of this before? Yeah, yeah. These are all things I've like read about over my life. I try to find these five spookiest ones. They yeah. spook you? <laughs> now I'm scared to go hiking. Yeah. But if you go, you like and have a great time, and then I don't know. Maybe it was an animal. What kind of animal like a bear? kills nine people a mile away from all their camp and doesn't eat any of them? I guess the one lady had her tongue and eyes missing, but do you think an animal would really just eat the tongue? And the eyes? Yeah. No. I think it would eat like the thighs. Maybe it was like, like a serial killer who lived in the woods. In the middle of no hundreds of miles Maybe it was like a creepy Russian nothing? serial killer. Like an old woman that's like, Hello, yes. We have children here. She, Maybe it was a witch, like the Blair Witch Project. Or like those witches that fly around in the sky. <gasps> it was the witches that fly around the sky. It was probably the witch. We figured it out. Yeah, it was definitely the witch. It was the freaking witches. It was the alien witches in the sky. That did that. Yes. Wow. Guys. Absolutely. If we go missing because we figured it out, 
It's the alien witches. <laughs> the alien witches that came to get us. Yes, the government <laughs> is weaponizing alien witches. <laughs> Alien witches! That is the craziest. Give me some of this. That is the craziest. <laughs> you love that stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm so full. I'm sorry that I'm not eating. Like, I'm literally, like, I think I drank a lot of water because I was so thirsty because of all the salt. I can't eat anymore. Like, I can't. I'm sorry. But I think we're pretty much done, right? Yeah. Subscribe, turn on push notifications, and say done when you're done. <laughs> and we'll pick one of you guys and shout you out next video. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Is that really going to happen? Oh yeah. You know this is my channel, right? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, a lot of you guys are wondering why Harrison and I aren't posting on our channel. It's because our channel is haunted. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, the spooky mukbang thing that we worked really hard on. Obviously we're not going to throw this stuff away. We're going to keep it and eat it throughout the day and tomorrow too. What's the spookiest real life story you guys know? Comment yeah. down below. Link it, because I love to read that kind of stuff. And Harrison and I will read it together tonight and cuddle up. Mm -hmm. Or if you saw, or like if you recommend any like really creepy movies, link that down below, because we need spooky movies to watch. Harrison and I are gonna watch The Orphanage tonight. Mm. I figured that out okay. right now. It's like a, I think it's a Spanish movie. It's so good. It's like one of my favorite horror movies. I've seen that. It's Spanish. Yeah. It's from Spain, right? Yeah. It's where the, the lady, the, the, that thing comes in their apartment? No. Okay, I haven't seen it then. No, it's an orphanage. Okay. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my other Spooky Sunday videos. I have a lot. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye. Bye, guys.